Thor Ragnarok is almost a month away, and to make sure fans are still excited, Marvel released the third international trailer for the movie, and of course, it's filled with visual goodies. My name is Sam Basher, and I'm about to dig into all the hidden treasures this trailer has to offer. As per usual, here's a spoiler warning for Ragnarok, the Thor trilogy, which is weird to say, and the MCU in general. Let's get into it. There's some new footage that, when pieced together with clips from the other trailers, might just spell out an entire third of the movie. Whoa, which third? Be patient, my friends. Roll the trailer. Thor, I sense a great change in your future. Destiny has dire plans for you, my friend. I have dire plans for Destiny. Hello, the goddess of death has invaded Asgard. I thought you'd be glad to see me. Asgard is dead. It'll be reborn in my image. You need to stop her here and now. To prevent Ragnarok, the end of everything. So they're putting together a team. Like the old days. Surprise! This will be such fun. Hello. Hi. He's a fighter. Here we go. Yeah. I'm not a queen or a monster. I'm the goddess of death. Were you the god of again? For timing's sake, let's just skip over all this cool action because we've seen most of it a few times now and nothing too new except this extended shot of Korg, the rock alien from the Planet Hulk and World War Hulk storylines. He's shooting an awesome gun. Can't really beat that. So cool. I believe this trailer really lays out a roadmap for a good chunk of Thor Ragnarok. When you add in all the other trailers and whatnot, one could make a pretty good guess as to what happens in the first act of this movie. And there's one element that really pulls it all together. But before we get to that. Here's my theory as to how the first third of the movie will go. Again, this is just my theory, and not to toot my own horn, I think it's pretty good. I'm thinking this story begins with Thor continuing his adventure to find the Infinity Stones out in the universe. He still needs to locate a bunch of them, so now he's focusing on the Soul Gem, or Stone, whichever you like to call it. Also, it's the last one we haven't located yet, so it makes sense. When coming to Odin for advice, he realizes that Loki has banished and replaced Odin. <gasps> Upon realizing this, Thor sets off to New York City with Loki as his prisoner, and based on this clip and a few of the set photos that have leaked, Thor enlists the help of Doctor Strange. Cool. Here's where we get Strange giving Thor that weird prophecy about change and whatnot. I'm feeling like Odin does get discovered in that homeless disguise we saw in those set photos, and Thor attempts to take him back to Asgard. But Thor learns that the location of the last Infinity Stone is in Hell. That's where we see Thor all wrapped up in chains, trapped in the underworld from the first teaser. Now my guess is that Thor is able to break free from those chains with me Mjolnir, take out Surtur, he fails to get the Soul Stone, rats, and barely escapes with his life back to New York, but uh-oh, Thor and Loki may have accidentally freed someone. Next, we see Hela is back, and she immediately does what she does best. That's right, kills. Well, not immediately. First, Thor freaks out and tries to take her out, fails, and loses his hammer. Damn, that thing goes nuclear, and possibly kills some people. I say this because in a previous clip we saw, Hela is absorbing some orange energy in the same alleyway, which could be that she's drawing power from the people she's just killed. Either that, or she's absorbing the energy of the newly crushed Mjolnir. Oh, sad face. Some of you might be saying, nah, -uh, Sam, those are different shots. She has her horns on now. Well, when she is speaking to the army of Asgard, they're missing. So I'm probably going to guess that they're retractable. Anywho, Loki and Thor get back up and hail Heimdall to take them back to Asgard. Lickety split. They're scared. When she was depowered, she crushed Mjolnir. So now that she's powered up, she must be terrifying. However, we now have a powered up goddess and she hitches a ride. And that's where we see the battle inside the rainbow tunnel. We see Thor get shelled out and then is tossed out into space. Yikes. My guess, since Loki is mainly known for looking after himself, he takes nosedive right after Thor into the great beyond and follows him to Sakaar. But he gets the better end of the deal since we see him and the Grandmaster sitting together in the same room. Cut to Thor falling out of a wormhole and onto the surface of Sakaar, the planet 
of the Hulk. Bam, now we move into the second act of the movie. But not so fast. Hela then arrives to Asgard, banishing Heimdall somewhere because he's definitely probably not there when Asgard gets barbecued. Heimdall is sent away, and then we get the epic confrontation of Hela versus all of Asgard. I think we can guess what happens after that. And there you have it. That's what I'm guessing to be the first act of the movie. Maybe I'm totally wrong. Maybe I'm half right, but I think I've got some pretty good guesses, mainly because of one crucial detail. Have you guessed it yet? It's Thor's hair. Bam. Follow the scenes of Thor with his high and tight pretty boy haircut and you get a pretty good sense of the flow of the movie, at least the first third of it. But the moment I wanted to point out is right at the end. No, not Thor having lightning pouring out of his pores. The one with Surtur shooting fire out of that nifty sword. That, my friends and family that have happened to stumble upon this video, is Surtur's classic Sword of Doom or Sword of Twilight. Sword of Doom sounds a little sillier, but it's more fun to say. They're probably not gonna name it in the movie, but why is it important? Well, one, probably helps Searcher bring about Ragnarok, as I pointed out in previous videos. Those flames that are bathing Asgard have to come from somewhere, and two, it's super powerful. Like, it infected the entire population of Asgard. They're, you know, gods that aren't supposed to die with an illness without even touching them, and it reshaped all of reality around Earth. Made it all medieval times. Should've mentioned that one first. It's a little bit cooler than just a really bad cold. Basically, the sword could easily take down Thor, Loki, and basically all other gods, but what about the Hulk? Could he take down Surtur? It's not an easy name to say. We see Hulk jumping into Surtur's mouth, ready to perform some unlicensed dentistry on the fire demon with his fist, but something seems off about these two shots. The first one being the international trailer where Surtur's torching what looks to be Thor based on the cape and the boots, and from previous trailers, we see a bearded Thor bathed in fire. Fair to assume those are the same scene, but look at the size of the demon compared to Thor. Now look how big Hulk is compared to Thor in the Revengers lineup shot. Now, look at Hulk jumping into Surtur's face. Does Surtur look bigger to you? Like at this height, Thor could easily be at the same height of Surtur's face, but when Hulk is attacking, he looks like he could just jump right into Surtur's fiery mouth. And in this movie, Hulk is supposed to be close to nine feet tall. Whoa, that's tall. Maybe I'm looking too far into it, but maybe Surtur's power is growing after singeing the beard off of Odin's son and taking out Asgard. So that's why Team Thor pulls out the big guns, or big guns, it's just the Hulk. Well, he does have guns, <laughs> in a sense. These are just some stray observations I had and some Easter eggs I thought you guys enjoyed. But hey, maybe I have a few scenes out of order. What do you guys think? How close do you think I am to piecing all this together? Let me know your theories in the comments down below. If you want more Thor breakdowns, be sure to check out my other two Thor videos on this channel. And while you're at it, why not give this video a like, subscribe to New Rockstars for more content, and check out all of our other breakdowns. Rick and Morty, Game of Thrones, you name it, we got it. Also, make sure you follow me on Twitter, at Sam Basher, so we can continue this conversation, and I'll see you guys next time.